Rub up your engines! Now people are often asking me, Scotty, what about Mercedes SUVs? Well, here's a 2012 GLK 350. Now when they're new, you could have got one of these for between forty and sixty thousand dollars. So needless to say, they weren't giving the things away. Now this particular one is a two-wheel drive version, rear-wheel drive, classic rear-wheel drive. It's not all-wheel drive. And now that this thing is eight years old, it goes for about one-third of its original price. Realistically, it's lost about two-thirds of its original price in eight years. Now they're not over brimming with power. It's got a V6 engine, puts out about 268 horsepower. It's no slug, but it's no race car either. And in a city, this thing gets about 15 miles a gallon if you drive it conservatively. Now that isn't surprising a vehicle that weighs over two tons, the thing weighs over 4,000 pounds. Makes them ride decently, they're comfy inside, typical Mercedes-Benz comforts, leather seats, a typical Mercedes, it's cracking here, they always end up cracking there. Got a lot of space in the back, tool sunroofs, and when we get inside, got the usual little small back, you can put the seats down, like any SUV, and carry a reasonable amount of stuff in it. It's got the luggage rack, so you can put even more stuff on top if you want to. But of course, it's a Mercedes-Benz. That's why this thing, eight years old, has already lost two-thirds of its value. Now, I'm going to scan it, because the customer wants me to check it out with my fancy scan tool. We'll see what's going on inside it electronically. So we plugged it in, and now comes the fun. We'll turn the key on, so the idiot lights are on, the car's not running. Push the old Mercedes-Benz button, and away we go. It even takes a while just to initialize the system. That pretty much shows you the complexity of these Mercedes. They are uber complex. Okay, now it's initialized, now it's going to scan. That's gonna take a while too. It's running through. Their idea of quick and mine, two completely different universes. I guess they mean quick in terms of geological time there. <laughs> It's only got two codes for the tire pressure monitoring system, which is no big deal. Fault for the right front door, which is no big deal. Now we'll look at some of the live data, see what kind of information comes out. We'll check out test failures, we're driving the full load range. Now right away I can see this data is bad, red means bad. You can see it's out of specs, but when I rev it up, you can feel the engine isn't running right. It got a little into the black here. But now as you can hear when I rev it up under the engine, listen. You can hear a little, but I feel shudder. This engine has problems. It's a used vehicle, and I even think that they cheated on the mileage. It says it has 83,673 miles on it, but when I check on the computer, it says 134,661 miles on it. So they were cheated. This isn't the real mileage on the car. And even though it didn't show serious trouble codes yet on the OBD information, realize the OBD information is the tip of the iceberg. When some of that information goes too far to put the check engine light on, can't get your car inspected but the data that this computer gets is much deeper and as you can see the data for the cams was way off and I can feel it rumble when I accelerated it up and down. Shame we don't have rumble feature like in those old movies where they shook the seats when they had earthquakes because you would have felt it. This engine is not long for the earth. And it may be a Mercedes-Benz V6 engine but they are insanely complex inside. Having these things worked on cost a fortune. You have to replace an engine like this, the sky's the limit. Thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. So in this particular case, not a smart idea buying this used. It was two thirds cheaper than a brand new one, but it doesn't have much life left in its engine. So now you know why not to buy a used Mercedes SUV. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Onyx Leo says, I have coolant mixed with my oil. Really, it's sad because it's normally the head gasket of your engine is blowing. I got a video how to tell if your head gasket is blowing. Watch it. There's a simple test. You can buy the tube yourself. Amazon, they have kits for like 30 bucks when they're on sale and test it. And if it is, you got to decide. You want to rebuild your engine, you just want to get rid of the vehicle. Now, on some vehicles, they do have 
engine oil coolers. And sometimes they go through the cooling system. And sometimes if they get a leak so that the coolant can leak inside the engine oil cooler, you can just replace that. There are a few vehicles like that that, that will occasionally happen. But in a majority, the cooler that's on your radiator is for your transmission. And that can only make coolant get in your transmission oil, not in your engine oil. So do that test. And if you find it's going, you got to decide. Do you want to repair the engine or just go on to another car? Engines are getting more and more complex. The guys that used to rebuild them. A lot of times they can't anymore. Guys I used to use here in Houston used to rebuild cars. They still do, but they do a lousy job. Decades I took them to them, but years ago I took them another car. They botched up the job. It was too complex. They didn't do it right. The old guys that I was used to, they're all retired. They had young kids doing it. Didn't know what they're doing. So a lot of people do not know how to rebuild engines anymore. Realize that even if you spend a few thousand dollars, they might not do the job correctly. Almighty school, Mr. Scotty, what do you think of Ford Air Volvos? I have an 11 V company with two liter EcoBoost and find it more reliable than recent VW or Audis. For that period of time that Ford owned Volvo, it actually kind of helped both companies. Ford came out with the Fusion, which of course is the Fusion of Ford and Volvo, and the Volvos seem to have been gone up a notch, but then Ford gave up with that, and as I said earlier, Chinese own Volvo now, so, you know, I wouldn't, but a 2011, it can be a relatively reliable vehicle, certainly better than VWs or Audis. They're low on a list of reliability as they age. Bernard Greaseboxes. Hey, great channel. My daughter wants a convertible for 18. Any suggestions? Yeah, get her a Mazda Miata. It's the only two-seater convertible that ever sold more than a million models. Nobody else ever did that. They are great little cars. And I don't know how much money you have. If you have a lot of money, buy a brand new one. If not, there are a zillion used ones out there. Anywhere from really, really old ones for five, six hundred bucks to really good ones for eight or ten thousand dollars. It still have tons of life in them. Those are great little sports cars. They can run forever. And they're not overpowered. So it's not like you're going to wrap it around a tree driving 150 miles an hour. They are totally reliable. Well, Jay says, Scotty, what do you feel about GMC's new Hummer coming out? Okay, yeah, it's going to be an electric Hummer, right? So now all bets are off. It's a completely different vehicle. It's going to be an electric vehicle. I'm sure there's enough people that will buy electric Hummers, the original Hummer. They did not sell that many of them. And maybe as an electric vehicle, if somebody wants a big, giant electric vehicle, they'll be successful. Who knows? The problem is, how big is it going to be? How much is it going to weigh? And how far is it actually going to be able to go? I mean, if somebody wants a weekend toy, a generator in the back where they can start it up and recharge it while they're driving it, I don't know. It's kind of funny that it went from the biggest gas guzzlers to an electric vehicle. But it'll be an interesting experiment. Just realize they never sold that many of them. So they got a big name, but it was never that popular of a vehicle. That's why they stopped making the old ones. They didn't sell many of them. XX Grim Reaper XX says, how did you learn all that car stuff? I started when I was 14 years old, working at a corner gas station in New York. The owner, my grandfather, was the master mechanic, and I did that when I was 14. They didn't have child labor laws in those days. That's how old I am. And I just like picking up stuff for fixing cars. My grandfather, who was the master mechanic, though, I said, you know, teach me. He said, I'm not going to tell you anything, but you can watch me. <laughs> so I watched him, and it kind of fit my personality, because I don't listen to people anyway. So I just watched him, like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I just picked up. I have a natural knack for fixing things. When I was a kid, I fixed my steering amplifier. I knew nothing about it. I knew enough to take the cover off. I put on headphones. I had a screwdriver, and I tapped everything. And then when I tapped one capacitor, the thing would start working. So I unsoldered a capacitor, went to Radio Shack, said, give me one of these things. I didn't even know what it was at the time. Soldered it and it worked. And it worked for another 35 years too. So <laughs> I just have a knack for fixing. And today though, the internet, you can get information for absolutely positively anything. I subscribe to professional mechanics associations where there's data systems. I use all data, which is a great data system where you can get all kinds of answers. And it's just for mechanics. There's all data DIY.com where for like 29 bucks a year, you can get your own individual car, get the same information that I get. So there's a lot of information out there that didn't used to exist. It's a lot easier today than it it was in my day to get information. But on the other hand, it's a lot harder to fix them because they're getting more and more complicated. It's a double-edged sword there. <laughs> Number one, Pax says, Scotty, I'm from LA. What are your thoughts on a 2012 Buick LaCrosse? Their engines are pretty strong. The trannies are a little bit on the weak side. If you change the oil regularly and don't beat them, they can be decent cars. I had a customer that gave one to his son who was 18 and he ruined that car in about 5,000 miles. He brought me the car and I said, what? he said, what's wrong? I said, the transmission's out. He said, how could it be? It's only got 16,000 miles in a whole car. How does your son drive? He says, he drives it real hard. Well, the engine put enough power and he was gunning it and peeling it out all the time and he burnt the transmission. The spot welds were breaking on the torque converter and it was rattling around. So if you baby them, they can be a decent car. If you're hard with a lead foot, I wouldn't buy one. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, 
Remember to ring that bell!